over there. Make sure we got it going. Glad you could be here. We're going to talk today about the worst foods for your brain. I'm going to explain why I chose that title in a second. If you're new to the show, the way this works is I talk for 24 minutes. You, whatever platform you're on, have an opportunity to type in any health questions you might have. So this is a great opportunity to kind of bounce it off me and see if I have some answers for you. I usually do. And then I do another 24-minute segment. Take a break. I answer your questions again. So at 24-minute breaks, we're going to answer your questions for you. So please type in your questions at any time through the whole presentation. And then at the break, I'll go ahead and answer them for you. And that's how the game is played. That's pretty much it. So, again, this is a great opportunity. Uh, and any question you have, other people have as well. So if you type in a question, I really appreciate it because other people on the, on the, on the platform are going to have those questions, and they might not know they have it, or they may be a little too shy to ask it. I, I don't know who you are, okay? Garrett and John are going to read me the questions. I'm going to answer them. I don't know who you are. There's nothing personal about you know, my answer. I'll personalize it to the question, but you feel very safe and comfortable in this environment. It's, you're, you're good. So I'm ready to start uh, pretty soon here. As soon as the boys are done getting all the cameras and lighting set, we're ready to go. All right, John? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. What we're going to talk about today are the worst foods you can eat for your brain. Now, I gave a lecture the other day, a live lecture. I hadn't done a live lecture, gosh, in a couple of years, actually. And it was a lot of fun. I had a blast. And I started talking about um, foods not to eat. I call them the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And I, and I had an epiphany. And my realization was... I always tell you what to do, and people say, well, I can't do that, or I don't like that, or I don't want to do that. Not always, but some people. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make it so easy and so passive, you have to do nothing. How easy is that? You have to do nothing to get the results. I can't make it better than that. So I'm going to talk about the worst things that you can put in your body, not just your overall health, but specifically for your brain. Now, a lot of people have, you know, you, you follow social media, you watch the news, and you're eating berries, and you're nibbling on nuts, and you're eating a lot of salads. And these are all very good moves for your brain. But then I also find people that are eating bad foods. And I, I, I had one the other day, and she has a, a, a digestive issue. And I know I did a nutrition consultation with her a couple of years ago, but we forget. And she came in, and she says, I'm bleeding, and I'm in severe pain. The doctors want to do, you know, maybe cortisol, cauterize my colon or cut it out. And I said, tell me about your diet. She goes, I eat really well. You know, I eat this uh, natural bread, and I eat uh, yogurt without sugar in it. And she made a list of foods that she thought were really good foods. And I said, those are the foods that are killing your colon. Had another guy with an autoimmune disease. And his autoimmune disease is really bad. And he, looked, he was very pale, and he didn't, you know, he, I, he, I'm concerned. He's a father. He's got, he's got two kids. He's got a wife. And he says, I'm working out. I'm taking my whey protein. And I said, aha. Whey has a protein called casein, and we can't digest casein properly. That'll irritate your bowels, and that'll affect your immune system. And he was blown away. So I'm going to tell you what not to do, and then I'll cover some what to do as well. Uh, so let's talk about things that you're doing every day. And, and I understand you don't understand some of this, so I'm, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just telling you this is what you need to do. So I want to start with something called margarine. And like if you do frosting, cake frosting, cookie frostings, uh, these foods, uh, many packaged snack foods have it, something called trans fats. And what happens is that they change the molecular structure of the, of the fat, and it's not usable by the body. It can actually cause some real serious damage. Now, you may know trans fats aren't good for your heart and your, and, and, and your blood vessels. Research has found that they also mess with your brain. Study from the Journal of Neurology found that the older adults who had the highest level of one of the trans fats, one of the acids that are found in there, were most likely to develop dementia. So this breaks my heart. And in fact, if anybody works in a senior housing community, send me an email. I'd like to talk to you. I have this idea that I'd like to share. But I've, I've been to senior housing communities, and these people are spending a lot of money. My mom was alive. We looked into some of them. $10,000, $15,000 a month to live there, two meals a day. Um, and they have, it's Bob's birthday, so they're going to have potato chips and ice cream and cookies. And then it's Margaret's uh, whatever anniversary, so they're going to have uh, sodas and cakes. And, and I'm looking at what they're serving these people. And it broke my heart. Because these old people are partying, much like young people, 
And it's leading to things like dementia. It's leading to things like gastrointestinal problems, gas, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, mood swings, anxiety, depression. Uh, and all of these are things that affect everyone, but they really affect the, the elderly. And so when I, if you look, you look at margarine, frosting, uh, cakes, these trans fats are so bad for the brain and increasing the risk of dementia. Now, when you're young, you might be able to muscle through it. When you're older, your brain is weaker and you can't do it. So nobody does well with margarine. In fact, years ago, many, many years ago, I don't know, maybe 14 years ago or so, I remember doing a, a show and I, I talked about how the number one cause of heart disease is going to be something called hydrogenated oil. I said, I predict this. And margarine is the one that we got because margarine came out saying it's better than butter and it doesn't have the saturated fats and it's polyunsaturated fats, which actually turns out are really bad too. And I said this on a show. A couple of weeks later, CNN does, a, does, a, does an announcement and they say, number one cause of heart disease in the United States, margarine. And my mother calls me up and she says, I'm not sure if you're a nut or a prophet. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And I said, well, mom, probably a little bit of both. But she said, that's amazing that you've been talking about margarine, how bad it was for years, and now suddenly it's mainstream. So a lot of the things we talk about on this show are going mainstream. If they're not mainstream already, they will become mainstream. So we're very cutting edge in what we talk about here. So I really want you to stay away from margarine. I'm not a fan of butter either, and I'm not a fan of the plant-based butters. Now, if you know me, I'm plant-based. I have been for 38, 39 years now. And they still have the bad fats in them. They have the omega-6 fatty, fatty acids, uh, the linoleic acids, and they can, they're not healthy either. So better than I consider plant-based or the margarines, the, plant, the plant-based butters are better than the margarines, but really not a whole lot. And butter is right up there with the junk too. So that's an unfortunate situation. Now, if you're going to use oil, I recommend coconut oil, extra virgin organic coconut oil, extra virgin organic olive oil. Uh, avocado oil, those are really the only three oils you need in your life. So just work with that, and you'll be very happy. Other foods, again, I'm telling you not to do things, the things that are worst foods for your brain. Alcohol, I don't know if I really need to cover this at all. Single glass of wine or beer. If you have it once a year, eh, probably not that big a deal. The more you drink, the more difficult it is to process new information and remember things. And I know this. I've had, I have friends that drink uh, a lot. And many, many times they forget basic stuff or they say the same story over and over again. Uh, and it's sad because it can get you uh, confused and depressed. And, of course, it's bad for the liver and it's, it lowers your testosterone, just destroys your testosterone levels. So, uh, yeah, alcohol, not a good thing. Now, if you're going to drink, because I always say I, I negotiate with you on everything. If you're going to drink, I want you to do a couple of things. Number one, for every drink that you have, I want you to have three glasses of water. Now, it's a lot of water, I know. But alcohol dehydrates the brain. And one of the reasons it affects the brain is it dehydrates the brain. The brain shrinks. And I want you to take a scoop of Dr. Joe's Essential Source and Dr. Joe's B-Complex. Because when you drink, you pee a lot, and you're flushing out a lot of vitamins, minerals, and nutrients, and I want to replace them. So before you go out, scoop of Dr. Joe's Essential Source, which is prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, complete multivitamin, fruits and vegetables, and the B-Complex is different types of B vitamins that you're going to flush out of your system as well. And that's going to help prevent the hangover. You're going to drink less because you're drinking a lot of water. Um, and it's going to help prevent the damage from the alcohol. It's not going to stop the damage. It's going to slow down the damage. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about the worst foods that you can eat for brain function. Sugar, sugary drinks, not a good idea. So if you want to keep your brain sharp as you age, you want to stay away from those super sweet drinks. Now, researchers found that people who drink a lot of soda, sweet tea, other sugary beverages are more likely to have memory problems. Now, I read the research on that, and I played devil's advocate, and I said to myself, if they're eating sugary drinks and, and sweet tea, chances are they're not eating a good diet anyway. So it, the sugar is bad, but also the sugar lifestyle is actually worse. So these drinks, they have, a, they have a type of sugar called fructose. And fructose can, can cause certain parts of the brain to actually shrink, become smaller. Now, if I'm eating high fructose corn syrup, fructose is a sugar. And it has to be converted into something called glucose. 
Glucose is the fuel that your brain runs on and your whole body. So the fructose goes into my liver and gets converted into glucose, and the glucose gets sent out into the blood. It's utilized as fuel, and everybody's happy. But there's a problem. When fructose converts into glucose, one of the waste products that occurs is called uric acid. And when uric acid gets in your joints, it hurts. Now, I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management, double board certified in nutrition. So I deal with a lot of pain patients. And when the pain patients come in, I want to get them out of pain as quickly as possible. So we want to get them on or off the fructose because of the uric acid buildup. Now, meat has purines in it that can create uric acid as well. And so we get them off the meats and animal products as well to bring down the, the uric acid levels. So you think you're doing good because you're eating a high fructose corn syrup fruit juice. You're actually making your pain worse. And that's not the worst part. Uric acid gets into joints and it hurts. Uric acid prevents the body from properly producing something called nitric oxide. Nitric oxide opens up your blood vessels, increases circulation to your brain, your heart, your lungs, your sex organs. So, yeah, if you lower your nitric oxide levels, you can't get circulation to your brain. What are my secrets? Because people ask me all the time, you know, my age, they say, how do you handle like live questions. You could do, I've seen you do lectures two, three, four hours long, taking questions from the audience. You always have answers. How do you do that? How do you talk so fast? One of my secrets is nitric oxide. I take a nitric oxide supplement actually every day. Uh, the one Dr. Joe's nitric oxide is citrulline and citrulline converts into nitric oxide. You can't take nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas. You can take the nitric oxide support, we call it, and that converts into the nitric oxide. I take it before every show. I take it before every lecture. I take it if I'm going out and I'm going to stay out past 9 o'clock at night because I have trouble doing that anymore. And the nitric oxide is amazing for brain function, but also helps lower blood pressure. It opens up the blood vessels, increases circulation to your sex organs, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your spleen. Uh, gentlemen, if you take the little blue pill, 50% of the time it doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? You don't have enough nitric oxide in your body. You need the nitric oxide to open up the blood vessels. Many times when I get men on nitric oxide supplements, they don't need the little blue pill because it was a nitric oxide deficiency all along. So I take Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support every day for many reasons, including brain function. And it works real, and it gives you a lot of energy too. So it works real well. Um, speaking of men, and we talked about testosterone earlier with alcohol, uh, big problem among men, especially over 40, is performance issues. We'll keep it clean. It's a family show. And so we can do things like little blue pills. We can do injections. You can actually inject your parts, and that'll make the parts come to life. But every time you inject yourself, you're actually causing a little scar tissue to form. And that scar tissue over time prevents proper function. So one of the big issues we find is men's testosterone levels go down. Their nitric oxide level goes down. They have pinched nerves in the low back that control the sex organs. And so now the organs can't work properly. And so at our office, we have this really cool natural protocol that we have. We use, use something called acoustic wave therapy. Uh, it sends essentially sound waves, uh, in, impulses into the area to increase uh, cell, blood, blood flow and new blood vessel growth. Uh, then we do nitric oxide. Then we do home therapy. We give you a home therapy that you can do to uh, kind of exercise, so to speak. And we check the nerve supply in the low back because that's the nerve supply to the male organs. Substantially less expensive than just about every other protocol on the market. And the results are getting to the cause of the problem, not just treating the symptoms. And that's a very novel approach in healthcare. So if you have that issue, go to my website, drjoe.com. You can book an appointment. My staff will call you, and um, we'll go ahead, and they'll explain to you how it all works. And it's, it's pretty cool. And the results we've seen so far in just about everybody have just been phenomenal. So drjoe.com, that's for men with issues. Uh, but what we're talking about today is brain function, the worst foods for your brain. And we talked about the fructose and the nitric oxide, low nitric oxide production. Now, you're thinking to yourself, well, Dr. Joe, I don't do regular soda. I do diet soda because I'm much smarter than you, Dr. Joe. And diet soda doesn't have sugar in it or fructose, so there. Okay. Regular soft drinks, bad. Sugar-free ones are worse. Research find that people who sip at least one diet soda a day are nearly three times as likely to have a stroke or develop dementia. You're increasing your risk of stroke or dementia by three times by having just one soda a day. The artificial sweeteners, scientists feel, 
not proven yet, are the uh, offending ingredient because it's the only thing different between that and regular soda. So the artificial sweetener, I'm not a fan. Um, I talk about the seven deadly sins of nutrition, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Of the seven, the worst one is artificial sweetener. So I really want you to stop that. And now you can use stevia. You can use Lohan. These are all sweeteners that have zero calories. Xylitol. Now, if you do erythritol, xylitol, anti-OL, if you do too much, you might get loose stools. Don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Uh, but if you can do stevia, I recommend organic. Now, the good news is they have stevia sweetened soda. They have stevia sweetened tea. So you can get a lot of things stevia sweetened now. And that's a much better choice than the sugar or the artificial sweeteners. And what's going to happen? I'll just be honest with you. Once you start taking these things and once you start changing your diet, a lot of those cravings go away. Those sugar cravings, those cake cravings, those cookie cravings, even the alcohol cravings. I had a patient... Uh, very deep into alcohol and drugs. He came to me, had an epiphany, realized he was killing himself. He says, Doc, I, I gotta, uh, I'm killing myself. And he was so hyperactive. And I got him on what we call a 21-day detox program that we have to kind of clean out the liver and get nutrients in the body and have him stop putting the bad stuff in and put good stuff in. So it's a 21-day program. And first couple of days, he was wired. And about the fourth or fifth day, he comes in and he says, Doc, you saved my life. He says, I realized everything I was doing, but I couldn't stop myself because the addiction was so bad. And now I'm able to process that information after just a few days. And he says, I feel great. I'm losing weight. I'm sleeping better. But you saved my life. And I said, good. I'm glad. So there's a lot of things we can do nutritionally that unfortunately is not part of mainstream healthcare. And I wish it was. And most doctors wish it was. It's just not part of the curriculum. It's not their fault. They're not taught it. Doctors come to me all the time. We're not taught nutrition, doc. I don't know any doctor that's ever come to me and said, I know a lot about nutrition, unless they've studied it, you know, uh, extracurricularly. So the artificial sweetener is really bad for the brain, but it's bad for other things as well. If you like fried food, and who else likes fried food aside from me? People who eat a lot of fried processed foods tend to fare worse when you measure their thinking skills. Likely reason, fried and fatty foods. Well, makes sense. Guilty pleasures. And I like them too. I'm Italian. There's a great Italian dessert called the Zeppoli. It's sweet yeast dough that's deep fried and covered in powdered sugar. Now, when I was a kid, that was the biggest treat. Once a year, they had something called the San Gennaro Feast in New York. And we'd go and get Zeppoli's, and it was just the greatest thing in the world. They taste unbelievable. You like donuts? Pfft, nothing compared to a Zeppoli. But that being said, some of the worst food you can eat. White flour, sugar, tra trans fats, processed oils, a more sugar on top of it, not a good idea. But the fried foods, uh, what they think, what, what, we, what happens is they cause inflammation, and that can damage the blood vessels that supply the brain, and that can hurt the brain itself. And many times I've had patients come in, and I look at their blood vessels, and their blood vessels are clogged up. And when the blood vessels are clogged up, you can't get circulation to the brain, to the sex organs, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the spleen. Many times when it comes to romantic issues for men and women, they got clogged arteries. And you can't get blood flow to the you know, happy parts, as a comedian, uh, uh, I can't think of his name now, used to say. Uh, oh, Mr. Happy, that's right. That was uh, Robin Williams. And you just can't get blood supply there because the arteries are clogged because you decide to eat a lot of donuts and Zeppelis and fried foods. So French fries, I, I like them. Not going to lie to you. Um, but not good for your brain, not good for your heart, not good for your life. I don't think sacrificing your health is worth it. That's my opinion, and I've been doing it for years, and I know it works because I've had a lot of people sacrifice their health in the name of pleasure. Ah, what the heck, a couple of drinks every now and then, you're going to die anyway. Ah, I don't care. What, you're missing out on all the fun in life. Anybody ever use that excuse? I have more fun now than I've ever had in my entire life because I have control of my health. And I can't imagine anything being more fun than that. I've drunk. I know what it's like. I've eaten bad food. I know what it's like. I've gone out and party, and I know what it's like. It's not worth it when you realize how much better it is when you're healthy. And so much cheaper, too. So when it comes to health, I look at three things. The nervous system, digestive system, and your diet. Nervous system controls everything. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, uh, sciatica, folks, that's a pinched nerve. 
And the best way to fix a pinched nerve is unpinch it in most cases. Sometimes it's a tumor or something like that. But very, very, very rarely is that the case. So if you unpinch the nerves, chiropractic, most effective, least expensive treatment for pain. Then you got to look at your digestive system. Are you breaking down foods? Are you absorbing your nutrients? Are you passing out your waste products? If you're not, we have to work on that. In fact, there's an adjustment I do for my patients where the stomach can push up against the diaphragm. And my team of doctors and I can actually massage or pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm. It's the number two reason we see patients. Number one is pain. Number two is stomach. So if you have heartburn, acid reflux, diarrhea, burping, gas, bloating, uh, constipation, many, many, many times the stomach is something you have to physically adjust to get it working again. And also your stomach breaks down proteins, and proteins break down into something called amino acids. And the amino acid named tryptophan becomes serotonin in your brain, and serotonin helps you think. Serotonin becomes melatonin, which helps you sleep. So if I could get to every senior citizen in the world, and I wasn't allowed to adjust their spine, which would be a horrible tragedy if I couldn't do that, but if I could just adjust their stomach, you would see a dramatic change in everything, how they function, how they work, how they live, the happiness levels, um, uh, how, how they sleep. Everything changes when you fix the digestive system. And then we get them on good, good food. We get them on more fruits, vegetables, nuts, not them, you. We get you on more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. If you have normal or high blood pressure, you take nitric oxide. Don't take it if you have low blood pressure. The two supplements I believe everybody should be taking are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. They taste great. I mix them together. Uh, essential, essential Source is the number one. Super Greens is number two. Mix them together. I shake it up with some coconut milk, almond milk. I mix it with a frozen banana, some frozen strawberries. I had it yesterday. And I have that every single day, first thing in the morning. And because I have normal, uh, not high blood pressure, but normal, I take nitric oxide as well. And my brain kicks into gear. And I got a bunch of energy. And I feel great. So your, body, your brain needs fuel to run. And if you're doing things like alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, donuts, zeppelins, artificial sodas, you're not giving the brain the nutrients that it needs. How do you expect to grow a tomato if you don't give it all the nutrients that it needs? How do you expect your brain to work if you don't give it the nutrients that it needs? It makes no sense. And yet, for some reason, that's never discussed, hardly ever discussed when it comes to brain health. Well, we have a medication. Well, we're going to have to put grandma in memory care. If grandma's getting old. This is just how it is. You can come visit her once a year, but she won't remember who you are anyway. But that's going to be twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month. But that's pretty much it. What if we took care of you, because you'll be a grandma or grandpa someday, I hope, or certainly old enough to be. What if we took care of our brains now? We stopped putting the bad stuff in. We started putting the good stuff in. That would change everything. The whole trajectory of your life would change in that moment when you made that decision. Why wouldn't you do it? So drjoe.com, uh, if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we'd love to see you. Um, so chiropractic care, stomach, nutrition. Uh, normally, the first visit is $940. For my listeners, I've reduced that to $299. That's exam, x-rays, consultation, first treatment, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation. And we'd love to see you in the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Just go to the website, drjoe.com. Just book it. Stop arguing with yourself. Stop being silly. Make the decision you're going to get well and stay well, drjoe.com. I don't know why you're not doing that right now, but maybe you are. I hope you are. So if you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about the worst foods for your brain. And we talked about fried foods. We talked about... Uh, margarines and hydro trans fats, hydrogenated oils, alcohol, sugar sodas, uh, donuts, right up there with fried foods. I mean, pretty much that's what a donut is, is, is fried sugar. Studies have linked high levels of sugar in the blood with dementia. Donuts contain trans fats, which we just talked about too. Now, we look at dementia. There's a word for dementia. It's called type 3 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes means your body, your cells in your, in your body can't process sugar, and so the blood sugar goes up. Type 3 diabetes is when the brain cells can't utilize glucose and the brain cells can't function properly. So I've done shows on diabetes before. You can go to my website, drjoe.com, just type in diabetes. Listen to that show. The same thing applies to the brain. It's not hard to figure out. So folks, do me a favor. I got to go to break. I'll be right back though. If you have any questions, send them to me through my website, drjoe.com, drjoe.com. A little bot pops up. Send me a question. I'll answer it as soon as I can. Follow me on social media. 
We post health tips every single day. You're going to get health tips, sometimes two or three a day, absolutely free. It's at Dr. Joe Esposito, at Dr. Joe Esposito. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere, LinkedIn. Uh, if you're a podcast junkie, just go to your podcast service, type in Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. We post twice a week. Uh, but the website's there 24 hours a day. Just search the website for anything you're looking for. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, drjoe.com. Tell your friends about the show. We'll be right back. You have questions for moi? There are several. Okay. Is there a way to test for trans fat with a blood test? You test the cholesterol levels, but the trans fats, I don't know of any test to test to see if you have trans fats in your body. If you put them in, you have them. If you don't, you don't. So it's pretty simple. Yeah. What else? What are your thoughts on cool sculpting? Cool sculpting. I usually don't give recommendations on brands. Um, but I will tell you, if you try to freeze fat cells, um, you'll freeze the fat cells, and they do die off, absolutely, but they don't freeze the fat cells around that area. And I've had patients come in already, and they'll have, you know, they'll have it across their belly, and their belly is flat, and then right around it, they have all these fat cells still growing. So it's something you have to really sculpt the body with. So it'll kill fat cells, absolutely. Would I recommend it? No. My mother has high blood pressure. What should we do? Go to my website, drjoe.com. Type in blood pressure. We just did a show on that last week, two weeks ago. Um, and I really covered everything on that. But nitric oxide is great to lower, help lower the blood pressure, open up the blood vessels. But this is treating a symptom. So listen to the whole show on blood pressure and bring her in to see us, of course, because it could be a digestive issue affecting the parasympathetic nervous system. And then we can work on that as well. Um, but if you bring her in, we can do a whole protocol. But listen to the show on blood pressure. That should answer your questions. What is microvascular disease and what can be done about it? Microvascular disease. Well, microvascular is small blood vessel disease. So I'm assuming it's an inflammatory reaction of the blood vessels. Um, the blood vessels need uh, uh, nutrients to keep them strong and flexible. And so many times if you're eating bad foods, uh, the, the, the nutrients we find in fruits and vegetables called bioflavonoids are the things that help keep the blood vessel strong. So we'd have to find out what causes the circulatory issue. Um, is it a clogged liver? Your liver is a filter, and you can get back pressure if the filter's clogged like you would on anything else. So we want to look at the filters. We want to look at the bioflavonoid levels in the body. Are you eating meats, dairy products, trans fats, hydrogenated oils, uh, high acid foods, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener? Um, do you have a lot of free radicals in your body? Do you smoke? Are you around pollution a lot? Are you using artificial chemicals in your house cleaning? So you really got to change the whole body to build up those, those blood vessels. Um, so if you want to come in, we can do a, a workup on it and we can find out what you need. And if you're not local, we can always do a, a remote consultation. But uh, there's a lot of factors involved in a circulatory issue. It's not a quick, hey, do this and it's done. So probably have to meet with you for that one. Good. Can I take more than one digestive enzyme a day? Yes. Uh, you can take one or two with every meal. And a lot of people do, and it's amazing what happens when you do, especially if you're older. What else? What are your thoughts on buckwheat flour? It's okay. It's not really wheat. It's very confusing. It's a flour. It's actually a little ber berry flour type thing. Um, yeah, buckwheat flour is okay, but it's still a sugar. It's still a processed sugar. Uh, it's a heck of a lot better than wheat flour. And buckwheat is not wheat, just so you know. It doesn't have any gluten in it. Um, it's better, but it's, it's still a lot of sugar, so I would eat it very sparingly. What are your thoughts on berberine? How does it compare with ozempic and ribulsus? <laughs> berberine just stabilizes your blood sugar. The other medications actually shut down a part of your brain. They use a protein that shuts down a part of your brain where you feel hunger, and so you just don't feel hunger. I'm not a fan of the medications for uh, the, the diabetes, diabetes medications. It used to be called off-label, uh, used for weight loss because the side effects that I see with my patients and people I know are pretty extensive. And we don't know the long-term effects because it's a pretty new medication. Um, so berberine just stabilizes your blood sugar, which is great for diabetics. It's great for people that have sugar cravings. Uh, I'm a big fan of berberine, actually, yeah. Any thoughts on how seborrheic dermatitis can be treated holistically? Seborrheic dermatitis, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a liver issue in most cases. You got to clean out the liver. Whenever I see a dermatitis of any kind, um, I think about liver. And it's, I'm always, almost always right. 
So you got to take the stress off the liver. You got to cut out the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Uh, Supplement-wise, nitric oxide, if you can, if you have normal high blood pressure. Super greens, an essential source. Uh, Super greens has chlorella in it, which helps detoxify the liver. Glutathione, which is an amazing uh, nutrient. It's an antioxidant to help the liver function normally. But the key is take the stress off the liver. And if I had to give you two foods to give up starting right now at this moment, it would be wheat and dairy products. Zero wheat, zero dairy products. Not a little, not sometimes, not on Tuesday, not on your birthday. Zero. Because you got to calm down the immune system. Super green essential source, glutathione, uh, nitric oxide to clean out the liver. Go to my website, drjoe.com, and type in seven deadly sins of nutrition and avoid those foods. And there's another one you can follow up called So What Can I Eat? Uh, if you want to learn more about the liver, just type liver in the search bar. Listen to a show I did on the liver. But uh, whenever I see a dermatitis like that, it, unless it's a contact dermatitis, it's almost always a liver issue. So. Why don't we com- combine super greens and essential source into the same carton? Because it would be expensive, and we can do it. We've thought about it many times. People ask me to put it in a pill as well. Um, and putting in a pill is just going to be too expensive. I mean, I, can I do it? Absolutely. My manufacturers would love to do it. They'd love to charge me out the wazoo for it. It's just too expensive, and I'm trying to keep the price as low as we can. Uh, we can combine them, but uh, what you can do if you want to, uh, because some people just want to do one or the other, and that's why I keep it that way. Um, 98% of the people do both. Um, you can just take the two, mix them together, and put them back in a container, and then you have them mixed. It's pretty simple. I enjoy the essential source. How did you come up with the right ingredients for that product? <laughs> My friend Ron out in California was this unbelievably brilliant chemist, uh, just off the chart genius. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. And I would fly out to California, and we'd sit in a place called Follow Your Heart Cafe. And I said, Ron, I want to create the world's best supplement. What can I create the world's best supplement out of? And he said, well, you need raw fruits and vegetables because there's nutrients and phytonutrients in there. You need a complete multivitamin, uh, easy, natural vitamins, no synthetics. He says, you're going to need enzymes because as people get older, they don't, just don't break down food like they used to. And I said, what about prebiotics and probiotics? And so we went, I think, three or four times. We sat in, in a, caf- uh, a Follow Your Heart Cafe, and we created it. And I miss Ron a lot. He was a great guy. Um, but that's how it came about. I said, I want to create the world's best supplement. What do I do? And I picked Ron's brain and my brain, and that's what came from. So, What else you got? That's all so far. Awesome. All right, guys, going to do part two. All right, let me sip a little tea. Ah. All right, ready? Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. If you stayed with us, uh, thank you. If you're just joining us, welcome. What we're talking about today are the worst foods for your brain. Now, if you've listened to my shows, you see I, I do a lot of shows on brain. I talk a lot about brain. Why is that? Your brain controls everything. Nothing happens. Your thoughts, your dreams, your heartbeat, your lungs breathe, your toenail growing. Nothing happens unless the brain tells it what to do. And I can cut off my arm and I won't die. Disconnect my brain from my body, I die instantly. So that's a big concern. And we abuse our brains like crazy. We can do it physically. You get in a car accident. Your your neck snaps forward and backwards. The brain can slam up against the skull. And that can cause a a traumatic brain injury. It's called a mild traumatic brain injury. And you think, well, it's mild. It's no big deal. Mild traumatic brain injuries are very serious. And you never get over a traumatic brain injury. You always will have effects from it. I have a severe traumatic brain injury. I was hit by a car when I was 10 years old. And uh, they left me on the side of the road as dead. I mean, it covered me up. And this is uh, actually in another country, actually. And um, they just left me there until they can get an ambulance. So I, I laid there for, I think, for a few hours from what they said, and um, I don't remember any of it, and that's how I know it's a severe traumatic brain injury. I don't remember it. I still have effects from a traumatic brain injury. So you can have a traumatic brain injury physically. If you're ever in a car accident, the chances are very good you have some type of traumatic brain injury. And when you come to our office for car accidents, we analyze all that. Um, and then chemically, we can affect the brain too, and that's something you do every single day. People just abuse the heck out of their brains, whether it's bad food, whether it's perfume, whether it's cologne, whether it's uh, car clean, car, uh, new car smell, carpet cleaners, um, uh, perfumes, I think I mentioned that, uh, smoking, vaping, all these things are just eating away at your brain. 
And I'm t- talking today about the things you, you don't want to put in your body to protect your brain. And then we, I kind of went off on a tangent and talked about what you should do for your brain as well. Uh, but the brain needs uh, oxygen, stimulation, and nutrition. Oxygen, stimulation, nutrition. So stimulation is listening to this show. You're learning new things. You're picking up fun facts. Every show you – every I, I don't care how many shows you've listened to, chances are you've walked away with at least one new fact about health and nutrition. Uh, puzzles. They talk about doing puzzles, Sudokus, things like that. Uh, getting outside, experiencing new things, shooting pool. Uh, get the brain involved in things that it's not used to doing. Oxygen. Most of us don't breathe enough. And if you have bad posture, you're hunched over, you're pressing the lungs. If you're not outside, you got to walk, walk with your shoulders pulled back. you got to get oxygen in. You should purposely take deep breaths. Hold it and then exhale it as far as you can and do it again. Do that five, six times a day at least and get oxygen into the body. If your stomach is pushed up against your diaphragm, your diaphragm can't be going up and down, so you're not sucking oxygen into the body. And so if you have heartburn, acid reflux, burping, gas, bloating, many times we have to physically massage the stomach away from the diaphragm so the diaphragm can start breathing. Maybe you have a pinched nerve in your neck. The fourth cervical vertebrae controls the diaphragm. It's called the phrenic nerve. Diaphragm can't work if you've got a pinched nerve at the fourth cervical nerve and it's affecting the phrenic nerve. So there's a lot of things that are going to affect the brain. And then, of course, nutrition. And nutrition is the brain needs a lot of nutrition. The brain needs fat. You're a fathead. Uh, so the brain uses a lot of energy. It uses up about 20% of the calories in your whole body. And you got to give it good calories to burn. If it's got cheap calories to burn, it's not going to burn very well. It's like fuel. You can't put water in your gas tank and expect it to run right. You might mix it with some gasoline. It might run a little bit. But I want pure high-octane fuel for my gas tank. I want pure high-octane fuel for your brain as well. So let's cover. Let's finish talking about the bad foods. Uh, white bread, refined carbohydrates, white, even white rice. Uh, white bread, even if it's not sweet, can spike your blood sugar. And then it's followed by a crash, and that can lead to mental fog because your brain needs glucose to fuel itself. And what will happen is, let's assume I eat a ton of sugar. I eat some donuts and white bread and cookies and rice. And the body's going to break that down into sugar. Sugar's going to go up into the brain. The brain's going to utilize the sugar. How does the brain utilize the sugar? The pancreas releases something called insulin, and so does your brain. And insulin goes to the cell and acts like a key, and it opens up the cell and allows glucose into the cell. That's how insulin works. If you eat too much sugar, your body produces a lot of insulin. And eventually, the cells say, you know, I can't keep opening up and letting more sugar in. It's going to gunk up the works. I'm going to resist that insulin from opening me up. That's called insulin resistance. And so also type 2 diabetes. And so if the brain can't function properly and it doesn't, it, it's not re- receiving the insulin, it's called type 3 diabetes because it's not the body, it's the brain. But all these sugars are going to affect how my body utilizes the sugar, the white breads, the cookies, the cakes, the donuts, the white rice. And if I can't open up and let more sugar in, my brain doesn't work properly and I get brain fog. Research shows that too many refined carbohydrates increase the risk of Alzheimer's, especially in certain people that are genetically predisposed to it. How do you know if you're genetically predisposed if you've never been tested? Most people haven't been tested. I haven't been tested. So I don't know if I'm genetically uh, predisposed to it. So if you're going to eat breads, I want you to eat as little as possible. And I also want you to eat gluten-free breads. Now, there's a big buzz on this. In fact, I was just talking to a patient the other day who works in a Catholic church. And I said they even have gluten-free Eucharist now. And if you're Italian, you know what that is. Uh, Italian, if you're, if you're Catholic. If you're Italian, you have to be Catholic, I think. And... um. So gluten-free is all over the place, so it's buzzing, and I love that because it's still sugar. Gluten-free uh, bread is still sugar, but gluten has two proteins in it, gliadin and glutenin. And when you eat these proteins, it has a chemical in it that acts like morphine. And these chemicals from breads, wheat specifically, go into your brain and s- attach to the morphine receptor sites. So you're getting high when you're eating wheat. And I don't know if you're like me, but if I have a piece of bread, you know what I want? Another piece of bread. I love bread. I don't love bread. I love getting high from bread. Same thing with dairy products. There's something called casomorphines in it. You don't love dairy. 
or cheese, which is dairy, you love getting high from the cheese. That's why when you have one bite, you want more. I love this. You eat cheese, it doesn't even have a lot of flavor. Mozzarella cheese, right? It doesn't even have a lot of front. Fr- mozzarella, pardon me. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, doesn't have a lot of flavor. Why do you want to eat more? You're getting high from it. Casomorphines. I think it's called gliat- gl- gliatinmorphins. Anyway, yeah, the, the, the protein that's found in, in wheat. And so those things stimulate the brain and you're getting high from it. Wow, how's that for a revelation? You don't like bread. You don't like cheese. You like getting stoned. And so that's why you got to avoid those things. So a gluten-free bread, if anything, is a better choice. Sprouted bread also works, like an Ezekiel-type bread or a sprouted bread. That works. It's not good. It's just not as bad. Okay, but the wheat, I really want you to stay away from the wheat. And the other thing that will affect the brain with wheat is many times, uh, if it's non-organic wheat, the wheat is sprayed with something called glyphosate, which is a weed killer. And glyphosate, when it gets onto the wheat, they, they kill the wheat. It's easier to harvest. And I understand it from a business standpoint. It's a lot easier to harvest. What will happen is um, you're getting glyphosate into the body, and that can kill off the bacteria in your colon. It acts like an antibiotic. It does a lot of other things. It binds to minerals like uh, iron and calcium. And it binds to minerals, so it, you, you don't absorb them. But it also kills off the good bacteria, and the good bacteria help break down the protein to produce neurotransmitters in the brain to make the brain work. There's a rabbit hole, huh? So I really want you to stay away from the wheat and the dairy products, uh, always, especially in this case, we're talking about the brain. Uh, Red meat, it's high in saturated fat. It's bad for your heart. It's bad for your brain. Uh, Limiting red meat is the key to what's something called the MIND diet, M-I-N-D, and that's a research-based eating program aimed at keeping your memory thinking and sharp. So whether you're an outside-the-box thinker like myself, whether you're an inside-the-box follow-the-rules thinker like the MIND diet, we all agree on one thing. You got to cut out that meat, especially the red meat. Now, what's a protein source that's good for the brain? How about fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, legumes, split peas, organic soybeans? These are all good for the brain without the saturated fats and without the steroids, chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, pesticides, and genetically modified food either. So I get this question usually a couple of times a day. Well, Dr. Joe, where do you get your protein from? If you don't eat animal products, where are you going to get your protein from? Well, then I ask a, a, you know, a, a, a rhetorical question. Uh, where do cows get their protein from? Where do pigs get their protein from? Where do chickens get their protein from? From eating plants. So plants is the source of the protein. The animals just recycle it, concentrate it, and then you eat the concentrated protein. There is nothing in a plant-based diet that you're lacking by giving up meats and dairy products, except one thing, and that's vitamin B12. Now, most people over 30 should take a vitamin B12 supplement anyway. Methylcobalamin, that's the form I like, not cyanocobalamin. That's a fancy word for B12. Methyl is better. Um, Because we don't process it, we absorb it in our stomach, something called intrinsic factor. As we get older, our stomach acids drop. We don't have as much intrinsic factor. We can't absorb B12. So I take Dr. Joe's B-Complex every day. I also take Dr. Joe's Essential Source every day. These are supplements. They're on our website, drjoe.com. And I take them every single day, and you should too. I take at least, I would recommend for you, Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Now, Essential Source is the multivitamin, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes. Super Greens is chlorella, spirulina, wheatgrass, barleygrass, alfalfa grass. Um, it has great source of iodine. It's a great, it cleans out the liver with the chlorella. A great source of protein. So I mix the two together, scoop of each. I shake it up with coconut milk, almond milk. I drink that every single day. I can't imagine you sh- why you're not doing it. If nothing else, at least super greens an essential source. Then you could add things like Dr. Joe's uh, vitamin D. You can add the B complex, especially the B12. But I have B12 in essential source, and I have it in my Dr. Joe's B complex. If I take too much B12, I pee it out. That's the nice part about it. It's not toxic. So... Um, yeah, I, yeah, you need your B12 and that's, your, that's the best source to get is just in a supplement form, but I am not a fan of animal proteins. Now I'm going to negotiate with you because everybody, what do you mean? You like your steak. Oh, what's wrong with you? All right. If you're going to eat animal products, I recommend organic only. I'll negotiate with you. If you're going to do it organic only. So when I was a kid, the word organic, when you're portraying the food didn't exist. Everything was organic. Now we have to label the good stuff, organic, and the bad stuff can be called whatever it wants. So I really want you to stay away from the, the animal proteins unless they're organic. 
or just stay away from altogether. That's your choice, okay? Had somebody say, well, you don't have any fun in life. You don't enjoy. What about a donut? What about cookies and cakes? I always say, is it worth it? And if I want to have it, I can. It's not like I'm going to jail if I have it. But I know what it does to my body, and I have to ask myself, is it worth it? And this is a journey. This isn't going to happen tomorrow. This is a journey when you start saying, how can I make a better choice? What's a better choice for my brain? What's a better choice for my heart, for my sex organs, my liver, my spleen, my kidneys? Every meal, everything you eat, ask yourself this question. Is this the best choice I can make? I told a story. I went to an Emerson, Lake, and Palmer concert the other day with a friend of mine. And we were in a place called Little Five Points in Atlanta. And he uh, wanted to go to a burger place. And I said, okay, let's go to burger place. Not my first choice, but all right, you're the guest, I'll go. So I had a veggie burger and a side of vegetables. He got fries, he got cheese. Um, And it's all about better choices. Now the veggie burger was not the best choice, but it was the best choice I could make at that moment in time. And so just consider that. Make the best choice you possibly can at every meal. And you'll be amazed how much better your health is. It really is. And it's, it's not hard. And it's way less expensive, too, by the way. Everything I'm teaching you is the least expensive way to go. If you're just tuning in, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about the worst foods for your brain. Now, if you're doing, uh, we talked about meat. Let's talk about dairy products. Dairy products are loaded with saturated fats. Now, if you follow the MIND diet, which is the diet designed to help the brain work the best it can, uh, you want to stay away from certainly full-fat dairy products. I say stay away from all of them. So when it comes to brain health, uh, you have options for dairy products across the board. You have options for milk. You have coconut milk, almond milk, soy milk, hemp milk, chia seed milk. uh, I think I saw pistachio milk the other day. Um, Yogurts, you have plant-based yogurts, soy, almond. You can do those. Uh, cheeses, you have plant-based cheeses. Now I'm going to be honest with you. The cheeses are not as good as the real thing. But it's not worth it having the real thing. So the only good thing about alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, and the other foods we're talking about today is that they taste good. That's it. Only benefit they have is that they taste good. There are benefits to the options, uh, the alternatives, that far outweigh any benefits you might get from those foods. Now, I understand you're not going to do everything I say, and that's okay, and I'm just giving you the ultimate protocol. You decide what level you want to go to. What level do I want to be at? And you don't have to start it all today. You can do a little bit at a time. Cut out the artificial sweetener. Maybe I'm going to skip the cheese on my burger. Then I'm going to skip the burger. But maybe not tomorrow. Maybe later on. And as long as you're making these slow, progressive changes... Life becomes a whole lot better, and it's a lot cheaper. So we're talking today about the worst foods for your brain. I want to talk about fish. Now, when I was a kid, my mother said fish is brain food. And I always thought, well, the fish wasn't too smart. He got caught, was he? But fish had omega-3 fatty acids in them, wild-caught fish. Now, when I was a kid, fish were wild-caught. In recent, in not in recent times, we came up with this great idea is we can farm-raise fish. We can put them in these big pens, pack them in, fin to fin, feed them corn and soy that makes them get really fat, really big, genetically modify the fish. Many times salmon is genetically modified, and now we can sell a lot more of it. Well, the problem is that if they're raised on a farm, they don't have any omega-3 fatty acids in them because fish don't make omega-3 fatty acids. They get it from these smaller fish who eat algae. Algae is the purest form of omega-3 fatty acids, and that's the way it works up the food chain. And omega-3 fatty acids are essential for brain function. So 40, 50, 60 years ago, fish had omega-3 fatty acids in them. It's essential for brain function. Okay. I never liked fish, by the way. The problem is when you heat fish, you can destroy a lot of the omega-3 fatty acids because it's not very heat stable. Omega-3 fatty acids usually come in a brown bottle or dark bottle, so the sunlight doesn't even hit it. Sunlight can break them down. Barbecue is going to break them down too. And now, if you're eating these farm-raised fish, you're not getting omega-3s anyway. And a lot of the fish, even the wild-caught fish, have something in it called mercury, especially the bigger fish, the tuna, uh, the swordfish, the mackerel. The fatty fish, salmon, have uh, been around for a long time, and they've eaten algae and and, uh, plankton and things lower on the food chain that have 
mercury in them. Now, where does the mercury come from? China burns a lot of coal. And the fumes go up into the air, and they go over the Pacific Ocean, over the Atlantic Ocean, and it settles in the water. And the smaller microorganisms start to absorb this mercury, and then it works its way up the food chain. So fish are high in mercury in many cases. And so that's why I'm not a fan of fish oil as a source of omega-3, because fish oil many times have mercury in it. Now, you can get really quality fish oil where they filtered out the mercury, and that's better. But I still prefer either krill oil, which comes from a small shrimp, uh, or algae oil as my source of omega-3. Now, I don't eat krill because I don't eat animal products, but I, the algae oil is the purest form of omega-3. So I take algae supplements every single day, algae oil, omega-3 oils, for my brain. And I, I've told this st story before. I had a brain study done two years ago, and my brain is half the, my biological age. Or my chronological age, I'm sorry. My chronological age is double my biological age when it came to my brain. So there's a lot of things you're doing to your brain, folks, that you really want to stop doing. But you also want to look at the physical. Do you have pinched nerves in your neck? That can cut off the blood supply to the brain. Have you had a traumatic brain injury? Most of us have at some point. Uh, do you have good circulation up to the brain? So... I would suggest you come see us. In the Atlanta area, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. And we're a chiropractic and nutrition off offices. With, we have medical as well. We have a medical doctor on staff. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, sciatica, come see us. Those are so often so easy to fix. Now, it may take a few visits, but we get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. We do nutrition workup on every one of our patients so we can get the nutrients in the body to heal as fast as they can. And all the supplements we talked about, super green, essential source, nitric oxide, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, uh, digestive enzymes, probiotics, they're all available on our website, drjoe.com, in the store section. Again, at least, please, super green's an essential source, but pick the ones you need. It's certainly worth the investment. So if you want to make an appointment with us, drjoe.com. Normally, the first visit is $940. I've reduced that to $299. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first uh, visit, going over, first adjustment, going over the x-rays on your follow-up visit, and a complete nutrition evaluation. I don't know anybody who's doing all of that anywhere, at any price. Certainly not $299. The x-rays alone cost more than that. So drjoe.com, come see us. And then if you are a candidate for treatment, we'll talk about it. We'll verify your insurance. We'll talk about payment plans. It's the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. And in our office, overall health care. And we have a medical doctor on board if we need them too, drjoe.com. Uh, we talked about the ED protocol that we have for men with romantic issues, totally natural. We do acoustic wave therapy, home therapies, nitric oxide, check the nerve supply. Uh, and that's a fraction of the cost of everybody else out there. So you can just book an appointment. And when we call you to confirm, we'll tell them what you want. Um, I don't know why you're not doing this. Every, every day, patients come in our office and say, Dr. Joe, I've listened to you for five years, 10 years, 20 years. Can I get my picture taken with you? You're a big celebrity. All over the world, people know you. Why didn't you come earlier? How long have you had these headaches? 20 years? 30 years? Why'd you wait? I don't know. Stop suffering needlessly. I want to get to the cause of your health care problem, not just treat the symptoms. So, and you can treat the symptoms. It's fine. I want to co-manage your case with your other doctors. DrJoe.com. Do me a favor, follow me on social media. I post every single day, at least once a day, sometimes two and three times a day, little health tips, one-minute tips that'll blow your mind. It's all free. If you don't like it, unfollow me. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everywhere, LinkedIn. But please, at least Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, that I'd appreciate. Um, if you're a podcast junkie, it's Dr. Joe for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it. And we, po we, we podcast at least twice a week. We send out new podcasts, many times more than that. Uh, if you want to really be with the elite cool kids, go to my website, drjoe.com, and sign up for our newsletter. We don't send out a lot of stuff. We never give out your email address. Don't worry. But that's the inside scoop. Uh, we'll give away supplements. We'll give away um, uh, concert tickets I've given away in the past because that's the elite group. Those are the people that are really on the inner circle. So, And it's free. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. I'm not going to follow. I won't know who you are. I'm not going to follow you. So drjoe.com is a great source of information. In fact, if you go to the website – and just type in what you're looking for, chances are we've done a podcast, a radio show, a blog on it. Just type in blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it is, brain function, and uh, it's a great source of information. And all we have over 4,000 hours of information on our website, and the cost for accessing all of that is free. It's my gift to you. 
I want to get you well and keep you well, folks. I really do. I have a mission in life, and I've been doing this for 39 years, and I'm still going strong and don't plan on anything ending anytime soon because it's so much fun to watch people get well. And we get really high success rates, which is pretty cool. So drjoe.com, great source of information. Uh, if you're a member of the VA, if the VA refers you to us, we're on a VA referral list. I forgot to mention that a lot. Um, just have your doctor at the VA ask them if they can refer to us. Most times they do. If not, you can argue with them a little bit, and many times they give in. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to be your doctors. We'd love to help get you well and keep you well. And the VA pays for everything. Well, they pay for 12 visits at a time, but we'd love to have you do that as well. Uh, we do DOT exams. If you're a driver, truck driver, we'd love to work with you as well. So just, just come see us. In the Atlanta area, Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, drjoe.com. Uh, just do it. I don't know what you're waiting for. Why are you suffering needlessly? I get a little passionate about this, don't I? All right, so if you're just tuning in, I am Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about the worst foods for your brain. And a lot of times you're thinking to yourself, um, well, Dr. Joe, I'm eating a good diet. And I look at your diet, and it's just horrible. Um, so if you don't know what to eat, go to drjoe.com, type in, so what can I eat? But another secret, a lot of secret place that bad food gets in is bottled dressings, marinades, syrups. Many of these products have high amounts of high fructose corn syrup. And we talked about a high fructose corn syrup has to be converted into glucose and it creates uric acid, which gets in your joints and it hurts. And uric acid prevents nitric oxide production. That affects brain function, uh, brain flow to the brain, uh, blood flow to the brain. And then many times they have chemicals and additives and dyes that we know are linked to brain functions, ADD, many cases. So uh, simple salad dressing, you know, organic apple cider vinegar and extra virgin olive oil. Uh, I like balsamic glaze. It's thicker, and I don't like tart, so I like sweeter. And it's just a concentrated organic balsamic glaze. But uh, if you have any questions, folks, send it to me through my website, drjoe.com, D-R-J-O-E.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. All right. What do you have? What do you have? Is it good to take one tablespoon of olive oil a day? No. Uh, you don't need to take it. If you, it's part of your diet, that's okay, but you don't really need to take it, no. And about 80% of the uh, olive oils on the market right now are cut with bad oils, fatty, bad oils and bad fats. So I would say uh, not a good idea. Now, if you use it in your salad or something like that, you want to get organic, and you want to get it from one source, like Italy, Spain, California, because many times when it's from uh, uh, multiple countries, they cut it with bad, olive oil, uh, uh, bad oils. And so that's why I'm not a fan of that. What else? I've heard that lung capacity is the single biggest indicator of lifespan. Is that correct? I've never heard that before, but I can see where you would think that. Yeah, lung capacity is key. I don't know if that's a fact, but it sure sounds good. And I'll buy it. What else? What is the best thing to do for clogged arteries? Uh, you got to change your diet. Most clogged arteries are 100% dietary cause. So you want to cut out the meat, the butter, the cheese, the yogurt, the eggs, the ice cream, the alcohol, the sugar. So go to my website, drjoe.com. Listen to Seven Deadly Sins of Nutrition. Those are the foods you want to cut out. Then type in, so what can I eat? Those are the foods you want to eat. And then nitric oxide, if you have normal or high blood pressure, is great. Digestive enzymes, I take a digestive enzyme every time I eat a cooked meal. I'd recommend you do that as well. And you want to have something raw at every meal. Broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, salad, apples, peaches, pears, bananas. Raw food has enzymes in it, and that's going to be a key to help breaking it down. Now, there is a supplement. We don't have it. It's called natokinase. That might help as well. But if you don't change your diet, the natokinase is only treating symptoms. If you do change your diet, you don't need the natokinase. So what else? Are there any healthy cookies out there, like maybe vanilla wafers? No, if they have wheat and sugar in it, probably not. Um, you can do something simple. Take sesame seeds and mix it with a smashed banana and, you know, dollop, flatten it out on a, on a cooking sheet and bake them. And then it's banana sesame seed. That's probably okay. It's sweet and it's crunchy. Um, but most cookies are, I mean, they're going to have sugar. They're going to have fats. They're going to have flowers in them. So make a sesame seed banana cookie. How about that? There you go. Cheaper, too. What are your thoughts on creatine? Not a fan because it, um, uh, it can affect your liver. Uh, it's, it's important, um, but if you have a good digestive system and you have a good healthy liver, you don't need the creatine. Uh, if you need the creatine, you've got to fix your liver and your digestive system. So it's kind of a catch-22. But creatine can cause some pretty serious liver damage. So. Do you have any doctor's suggestions for someone who lives around Canton, Ohio? Canton, Ohio, I don't. 
I wish I did. Now, that being said, I am working on a referral network. I know I promised you this five years ago. Um, so I'm trying to find somebody. I'm trying to set up a whole national network that follows the Dr. Joe philosophy, get them certified in Dr. Joe. Um, so we're working on that. But right now, unfortunately, I don't know. I would say call around and find somebody who does applied kinesiology, applied kinesiology, a chiropractor that does that. Usually those are higher trained. That's where I am. I trained with the founder of it, actually. But they usually take a lot more time and study. So that's what I'd recommend. We can always do a remote consultation, too, if you want to, just on nutrition. Uh, we can do that. So just go to my website and book it. Yes. Where do I find the whole house water filter? Um, you can, uh, the company I use is Pure Life Water GA, purelifewaterga.com. They're not cheap, several thousand dollars, uh, but absolutely worth it. And make sure you tell them that I sent you, okay, because they, they usually give special treatment to the folks I send. Uh, purelifewaterga.com. Tell them Dr. Joe sent you. That is all. You guys are awesome. Thanks, guys. Oh, Garrett has something to say. Garrett has a lot to say. Sometimes too much. No. <laughs> All right. I, I got one from a friend of mine. Um, what's the quickest, easiest, pain-free way of cleansing your liver and intestines? That's it. Okay. Dr. Joe's 21-day cleanse. So if you go to the website, drjoe.com, just type in 21-day, and it's the quickest, easiest, cheapest, painless way to do it. Um, and you eat, you take these certain supplements, you eat from this list of foods, there's plenty of foods to eat. Uh, do the, do the vegan version as a vegan and a meat version. I don't think the meat version is kind of shortcutting. I don't think it's going to work real well. Um, and for 21 days, you take these supplements and after the third day, you suddenly get this rush of euphoria and you start to feel really good. And suddenly you start to lose weight and you sleep better and your love life improves and your brain clears up and you go, oh my God, this is amazing. Almost everyone I've ever done this with comes back to me and says, can I do this forever? And the answer is yes, you can. Um, but it's just incredible. So just type 21 day in the, in the search bar and you'll see it there. And it, the money you save on food more than pays for the supplements and everything else. It's like crazy. It's like the stupidest no-brainer ever in the history of the world. So, What else? We're good? All right, guys, make sure you follow me on all platforms, especially YouTube. We're trying to build up a YouTube family. So it's at Dr. Joe Esposito. Facebook and Instagram too. Facebook, please follow us. We, we, we had a bunch of followers, almost a half million. And we want to keep building those numbers. So at Dr. Joe Esposito, any questions, drjoe.com. I'll answer them for you. See you next week.